This is the 40th video on my channel, so I thought I'd open up a little bit differently than usually sitting at my desk showing my charts and talking about finance and trading. So this here behind me is a spot that's one of my favorite spots in the world, and I wonder if you can kind of guess where I am. If you do, leave me a comment below. But I still want to talk about finance today, and what I want to talk about is the absolute implosion of Archegos Capital, which is a, a giant family office slash hedge fund that completely imploded in seven days last week. And the reason I want to talk about it is, you know, for all of you market warriors that managed to turn $1,000 into $20,000 or $20,000 into $200,000 last year and did really well in trading, you know, this is a little bit similar to what this hedge fund or family office, if you want to call it that way, um, managed to do from 2012 growing $200 million into $20 billion in seven, eight years and then losing everything in seven days simply because they made some really simple mistakes that we can all do uh, when it comes to leverage and position concentration. So I want to talk about what happened, why it happened, how they did it, and how it completely happened undetected until it was too late for everybody, uh, including the banks that lost a ton of money in the process. So anyway, I'll jump in the water, go for a quick swim, and I'll see you back at my desk. Finally, back from the beach. All right, let's spend a couple of minutes talking about what really happened with Archegos Capital Management. And the reason why this is important is that anytime a big fund blows up in such a spectacular fashion, losing you know, 10, 20 billion dollars in a matter of few days, I really wanna know exactly what happened there because these are professional investors. They're supposed to know what they're doing. And uh, these are likely mistakes that any of us can make. We should all learn from those and so should you. So this whole thing started unraveling at the end of March, where just before the weekend on a Friday, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley started selling huge blocks of shares in companies like Discovery and Viacom CBS, two US media groups. And by Saturday, we realized that this was linked to Archegos Capital Management, a family office that wasn't able to meet a margin call from half a dozen banks across Wall Street because they allowed them to build these huge concentrated bets in these nine companies here. And by Monday, when the market finally opened again, you see the, what the share prices of those banks did. Uh, you see on this little chart here, Nomura and Credit Suisse taking the biggest hit, right? And at this point, we know that Nomura lost $2 billion in this fiasco and Credit Suisse lost $4.7 billion. So the real question is, what is Archegos Capital Management and how did they blow up so fast? So let me take you back to 2012. In 2012, Bill Wong converted his hedge fund into a family office after selling insider trading charges with US regulators. Now, at the time, he started with $200 million, and over the next seven, eight years, he grew it into more than $10 billion by really using those large concentrated bets, which is a strategy that was very successful for him in the 2000s when he was running his own hedge fund, Tiger Asia Management, which was a fund that was seeded by Julian Robertson, one of his mentors, um, and you know, obviously a titan of the hedge fund world. He used something called total return swaps, which is a really quite a simple derivative used in equity financing solutions, where effectively the advantages of a total return swaps are anonymity and leverage. Now, leverage because it really allows the investor to put up a very small amount of capital and anonymity simply because the investors are not actually the registered buyer of whatever stocks they're investing in. So the way this works is you effectively, as an investor, you pay a small fee to the bank and the bank gives you in return the full economic exposure of the underlying that you're buying. So you pay them a small fee, they pay you the dividends for the stocks you're investing in and the appreciation or depreciation. So if the stock goes up, the bank pays you a fee and if the stock goes down, you pay the bank a fee. Now it offers you a lot of leverage, right? And it's reported that Bill Wong used uh, somewhere between eight uh, to 20 times leverage. So think about it, if you use a 20 times leverage, if the stock goes down by 5%, effectively your whole equity is wiped out. Now the problem is he entered into these total return swaps with every single bank, um, somewhere between six and nine banks across Wall Street, and he had these huge positions with all of them, and they respectively didn't know about each other, right? Because, uh, because you effectively use those banks as a front, as a registered user, nobody really knows that you are the one that's investing in these stocks. And so it all, the whole thing started unraveling in the second half of March. First of all, Baidu started coming lower and then Viacom CBS. You know, just look at the stock price of Viacom CBS, which went from $15 a year ago to $100 in March, uh, and then decided to do a share offering of $3 billion, 
which you know tipped the stock lower and suddenly this whole cascade started uh, unraveling right with uh, then effectively Morgan Stanley and Goldman being the first out of the door and Credit Suisse and Nomura losing the most money in the process and obviously Bell Wong and Archegos losing everything so the question is how is this relevant to us right this really goes back to you know the basic trading discipline and risk management because we all trade on margin in one way or another right i'm not talking about your retirement accounts here but i'm talking about your online brokerages if you're investing in stocks and you're trading you know investing you probably use margin to a certain degree and you probably are not diversified to the degree you should be if there's two points really i want you to take away from this video uh, point number one is you know use less leverage than you think you can withstand so you should always have somewhere between 20 25 percent of your money in cash simply to have a you know a sufficient buffer but also to have enough capital to always do the next trade to always invest in something that goes along the way and you're not fully invested and the second thing you know the second point is when it comes to diversification very often investors think they're diversified simply because they invest in 10 15 companies but when you actually look and compare the sectors it's really not the case so you need to look you know for compelling stories across multiple sectors and really have proper diversification all right, quick update on Archegos Capital Management, the spectacular blow up that really is gonna continue reverberating because obviously there's now Credit Suisse is firing the head of risk management, head of investment banking, a uh, huge amount of losses for not only his family office and his family, but also for these banks, the shareholders. So this really concerns um, all of us. So hopefully you enjoy this. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in a few days.